Okay, today I want to talk about the input mode attribute that you can put inside of form elements. So here I have a very basic uh, HTML form and I've added in a bunch of input elements just so we can look at the input mode and the various values that it can have. Now, part of HTML5 was the addition of a whole bunch of new types for the input elements. So we've got email, tell, number, uh, search, URL, uh, there's a couple of others as well, but these are the ones that I want to focus on right now. Within a browser on a desktop or on a laptop, these are not going to make any difference whatsoever. But on a mobile device, on a tablet or a phone, we're going to see some difference. And we want to be able to control what happens with the keyboard on these mobile devices. And that is the purpose of input mode. Now, some of them, if input mode's not there, some of them will look to the type to get some sort of idea about which keyboard to display. But the proper standard way of doing it is using this input mode attribute. So we can set it for email, tell, numeric, search, URL. Uh, there's even one called none, which will go to the default. Uh, it was intended originally as something where you wouldn't see the keyboard, but uh, what it does on all the devices now is just it shows the default one. So let's take a look and see in the browser how, what we have here. Now, I've added a little bit of CSS just using CSS Grid to align these things nicely. So here's all the different elements, and I'm on my laptop here, so as I click on these, I'm not seeing any change. Um, I'm just running this locally on my machine. Now, I can use, right here, we've got 127.001. Um, I can use the IP address on my network, so my Wi-Fi, this is the IP address that I have on my local home network. Um, and then this one I can actually use to connect with my remote device. So I can have uh, an emulator running, and we'll look at that in just a second. And here's my actual phone. So if I come in here to inspect, this is what's actually on the phone on my uh, or on the screen on my phone, which is connected to my laptop right now. And you can see up here at the top that the address is the same as the one that I was looking at. It's the address on the network, and that's why my phone can load this page. The gap that we have up at the top here, this is sort of the uh, the Chrome at the top of the browser. Not the browser Chrome, but the Chrome of the browser. So the location bar, things like that, those are up here at the top. That's why I've got this gap. But as I select these, I'm not seeing anything. It's the same as if I were uh, using the browser on my desktop or my laptop. I'm not seeing the keyboard show up here. What I need to do to see that is actually have a device, which if I look over at my device right now, I can see that the keyboards are appearing. But to get a real sense of what's going on, we want to take a look at the emulator. So I've started up my Android emulator. I went into Android Studio and just went to the Android uh, Virtual Device Manager. I created a virtual device and I launched the emulator. Uh, I've got videos on how to do that as well. I'll put a link to uh, setting up the emulators for Android down below uh, in the description, along with the code sample that I used right here. Now, if I'm on this device, on the emulator, I click inside of one of the fields. So I've tapped inside of here. And what I get is this keyboard. It looks fairly normal, but right down here, there's the at sign. This is telling me that I've got the at sign to type out with the period as well, an email address. It's going to make it easier for me to do that. If I click on mobile, well, I'm talking about a, a phone number here. So we get the keyboard, which works like that. Uh, there's one for decimal, which I believe it's on iOS. Instead of showing these keys, it just shows a, uh, a period. It, so it changes it slightly. It's still the numeric one. Here's the numeric one. Very close. So if we go back and forth, we can see that the phone one also displays the letters beside it. So if you get a phone number, that has uh, a word as part of it. You can figure out what that is. So the numeric, the search will go back to the text one, uh, same as the default, except you get a little search button right here. Instead of an arrow or a next button, you get this little search. Uh, URL, it's the same as the email, except instead of having the at sign, we have the forward slash, because that's part of URLs when you're typing them. And then the one that's set to input mode none, that one shows us the default keyboard. This is just my placeholder text inside of there. So this is the standard keyboard. If we go into email, you can 
as we switch back and forth, you can see at the very bottom, we're getting this comma is changing into the at sign. And then for the URL, it changes again into the forward slash back to the default. So we have something that's very, very similar. And that's how you should do it. That's how you get a customized keyboard for the form that you're filling out. And this is going to help your users fill forms out and it's going to encourage them to actually fill out the forms while they're on your website. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, like I said, I'll pr provide the link to my source code from here. Uh, pr provide that in the description as well as a link to the video that talks about how to set up an AVD in uh, Android Studio. And the CSS is in here as well if you want to see how I laid out the form. All right, hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.